Hi there, welcome to another episode of the Coach Kaya Show. This is your live podcast where we talk all things soccer. I'm your host, Kaya Day McKinnon. Um, tonight is no different. We'll continue to um, stay on our objective for this whole for this entire podcast. Um, the reason behind the podcast actually is to make sure we are making an impact in the lives of our young people to make sure that they're living out their living out their purpose and uh, without fear, knowing that it, they will or they have the opportunity to do well. Let me quickly remind you that in spite of what you might be dealing with, what you might be going through, greater is he that is in us and he that is in the world. Not going to be long on this podcast. Uh, I will uh, promise to be here about uh, 45 minutes or less to deal with this uh, very important topic from my perspective, and that is trends in taco. I think it's vital. I think it's vital to understand if you are going to uh, make strides if you are going to progress, if you are going to be able to make a clear assessment of, of where you are and where you need to be. You need to understand um, where the game is going. And we'll look, we'll look at it from more of a on-field uh, approach because trends can be looked at it could be looked at uh, from different angles behaviors etc but excuse me we 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 would definitely look more uh, at on the field um, trends that i believe if we can if we can truly understand that we will will be on our way um to improving our game and becoming high performance so it's a good time to please share the share this 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 live podcast where you know uh, people who tune in can look um, on facebook facebook live youtube live instagram um, these are all places that you can listen to this podcast live. And if you don't want to listen to it live, you could still share um, any any anywhere that they listen to the to this podcast, the Coach Kaya Show, um, at Spotify, Anchor, and across the platforms. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so at Kyrie McKinnon and Co. Hit the notification bell so that you know when we're on every Saturday from 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. So please do share. Share if you have a young player. Um, if you are, are interested in, in knowing more about the game so that you can be the type of support that you need to be, that you can be more effective, in 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 how you guide your athlete um, this is a good good opportunity to to sit in and listen uh, because the objective tonight is to make sure that we are equipped with the why um understanding the why of 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 trends trends in soccer so it should be um it should be uh, a show that can help uh, soccer players, soccer moms, soccer dad, um, dads to to be uh, more equipped and to be able to look at the game and and make better assessments, make um, make better feedback, have better reflection on 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 the process so that they can help the athlete to grow. So before we we really dive into this. Um, subject tonight please let me know that you're here uh, 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 it's you know it's i'm always appreciative uh, 
and to people who take the time out to spend time and and, and show um, some some level of support in this process. So please let me know that you're here so that we can acknowledge you and and and, and show that level of gratitude for you taking the time out to be here. Nevertheless, we'll take a quick break to share our march with you. Please do support it um, and, and continue to uh, push us forward um, as we continue to grow and we continue to make a positive impact in, in, in lives of, of people, in communities and, and country and uh, countries at large. So stay tuned and we'll get right back to this. Coyote, McKinnon and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon and company. We care. Welcome back to the Coach Coyote Show. Coyote here, and we're talking about trends. Yes, this is your live podcast where we talk all things soccer. Please do share, 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 um, so we continue to attract um, those with um, the level of competencies to help to move um those who are listening and are part of this community and 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 are tuned in to what we're doing that you can have um, that better direction to help you on your journey with whatever you're doing so please do share as we continue to grow as we continue to spread this message um, this positive message about growth uh, about fulfilling purpose so trends um, when you look at trends in soccer, it's an action that is occurring consistently, and those actions are influenced based on an opposition. So when we talk about trends, it's not just something that you're doing. It's not um, it because it, it, oftentimes when you ask the question, people will say, "Well, it's something that is happening." Um, yeah, it's something that is happening, but it's influent. It is influenced by uh, an opposition something something that is consistently happening on one side is influencing the behavior on the other side and we we define that as a trend so <clears throat> you you could look at it um within with when you look at it within the soccer context you are unable to make good decisions oftentimes because you're not uh, you're you're unable to identify with trends, both individually, um, it could be individually, sorry, it could be um, uh, from a unit perspective and then the collective. And excuse me, oftentimes um, the hardest part is the collective because it's a, it's a much it's a much bigger variant of the game and there's so much more that you need to see um if you if you're struggling within um the, the smaller variant or the smaller numbers um, then it's very difficult for uh, to have that capacity to, to to see trends when the numbers are extremely big i think once you i i, I really believe once you begin to understand trends you um it is potent to your success in the game lots and lots of mistakes and 
the lack of fluency you see within the game is because it, it, it is more of an instinctive action and more of a reactive uh, approach than proactive and, and more deliberative in, in, in how we play the game. And it, it makes the game sometimes, I would say, um, unattractive. So we have to be we have to be aware and we have to truly go back, gather more information uh, based on what you're hearing or based on what you will hear. You need to do uh, your due diligence of gathering more information. If you're a soccer player, um, if you're a football player, based on where you're listening to this podcast from, um, you need to gather more information. You need to do more studies to really have a better insight, a better understanding of what uh, trends are and how important how important it is for your own development and your own advancement within the game. So I will I will definitely uh, share uh, from a subjective standpoint because uh, football is soccer is a universal is a universal game. Um, so different cultures, different understanding, different approach. So um, it, it's it's not one thing. Um, so it, it's it's my own idea. It's my own perspective. Um, so in the past few years, there and, and when I spoke about trends, or when I'm talking about trends, it's like I want to be more specific in in terms of. What are the trends in the game now? What what are we seeing in the game now? And in in the past few years, I've seen a real emphasis on um, some specific things within within soccer, uh, within football. So, if you are a player, if you are um, if you are a parent, if you are a parent who uh, really involved in 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 the sport when it when it comes to your to your to your athlete or your soccer player and you you struggling to understand and to uh, really measure if you reach getting closer to your goals or if you're a coach young coach now getting involved and you know you're struggling how to put together your curriculum, um, how to, you know, make your session plan. This um, this is where it starts. This is um, this is what is important to know. What are the trends in the game? Um, so, obviously, there are other factors, ages and stages, and um, and all the other things, the culture, uh, what is it you're trying to achieve? We know that. But uh, talking to soccer people and people who are, you know, interested in um, going forward in the game, no matter where you started, no matter if you're in rec now, uh, you know, rec is grassroots. You could look at it that way. No matter where you start, no matter where you're starting or no matter which, which program you're in, um, if you want to play at a higher level, if you want to do better, it's just decisions you have to make. You just have to make a decision to be in the environment that will help you to progress in that way. So I remember the last men's and women's World Cup, and they, you know, they had extensive discussions on um, extensive discussions around trends, and it was. You know, it's a unique role in the progression of the game. And I think that is why so much time was given. It was, you know, it was very intentional after, you know, some games or after every game. The, you can see a lot of webinars and stuff popping up about the trends in the game. So there are lots of trends that happen around that time. 
Um, but I really want to dive into to one. And maybe in, in the next few, I'll, I'll dive into uh, a few more. But I will give you three of, of the ones I believe that are the trends in the game now, the, the thing that is moving the game forward, um, the thing that people are paying attention uh, mostly to it in terms of uh, advancing and, and advancing their game and and having uh, better performances. You know, three three key things. One is the the physical capacity. Obviously, there's performance coaches, performance coaches, performance coaches. Now are super super important to every program. And then the psychological advancement. You know, as a man think it in his heart, so is he. So taking care of the condition of your mind and the condition of your thoughts and how um, those feelings are coming out on the field is vital for success. But the one I want to really zoom in on tonight and, to the, and spend the next, what, 30 minutes or 20 minutes or so discussing is uh, what I'm seeing uh, from my standpoint, is the tactical approach to go beyond the lines. That is that that is one I've seen. Um, it's a major it's a major interest, and 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 I can see a lot of inf, uh, a lot of emphasis being placed on <clears throat> the tactical approach in. Um, getting beyond the lines. So, and I think if you look at it, the top teams in the world uh, are the ones that truly influence our game. You know, they, and they, and their idea, their, their idea, uh, they influence the idea of soccer. I mean, we talk about idea, we don't. We're not talking about philosophy, and we're not talking about style of play. We're, we're we're not even talking about formation and all of those things. When we talk about uh, the soccer idea or the football idea, is it, it's it's talking about a system of success. You know, how do you get success? What is it that you're doing um, consistently? Uh, to get success, and based on that, you 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 build everything around that system. So it starts with that, and I believe you know the top teams in the world are influencing the entire game, they in, influencing the, the entire soccer idea uh, at this moment. And it should not be no surprise because we oftentimes look at success to model. You know, people don't look at failures to model. I think failures can, failures, failures. Um, it's all part of, of of growing. You could look at a uh, failing model and you could say, okay, I'm not going that direction. But oftentimes, people are more influenced by um, the more a successful model. People are more drawn um, to to kind of um, living out, or for a better word, what is much more successful within their field. And it's no different for soccer. So, so the stronger teams, what you're finding that the stronger teams are faced with many different challenges within the game because of the approach of the opposition. So what you're seeing with the more inferior um, with the more, more inferior teams when they're coming up against uh, top teams, uh, they make it very difficult in terms of how um, by how they control space, how they are super organized and how they are defensively responsible because they want to stop the machine. And um, the bigger team, the bigger teams are the machine. So I, I think by, by, that, uh, by that approach, it now has forced uh, the bigger teams 
to find a way to be much more um, much more tactical, much uh, much more innovative in how they're able to go beyond the line. And by doing that, uh, based on the based on what they're up against, consistently, they that be that is now the new trend. But I want you to I want you to pay attention to a key thing. The behavior that is influencing the trend is not just based on this is how they want to play or this is how they want to approach the game now. It is influenced by opposition. If a team is so threatened by you that they every time you come again, every game that you play, a team will they're deciding to go in a low block, more numbers, limiting all the spaces, then you have to be you have to now find a way to be able to get behind the opposition and create chances and score goals. So it's very important to understand that because people might just want to approach this new trend, right? They might just want to think, okay, this, this is the new way of playing, and they, they want to play like that. Okay, that's fine. But if you don't know why, or you are you not clear about why is this the new trend or why is this a new trend then you when you think you're going in the right direction you might be going in the wrong direction so while it's good and you want to know uh, what are the new trends in the game is also important to know the why and to be equipped. So, and you will see, and we, we dive a little bit deeper into this discussion, why it's very important to understand um, or to have a sense of not just the new trends or the trends within the game, but why is it a trend? Why is it a new trend? Why is it you're seeing more teams adopting um, this way of playing without uh, a full understanding of the opposition or why they're doing it? Because I, I believe I just see a whole lot of teams just trying um, to be more uh, expansive, for a better word, in the way they play because that's what they're seeing, but they're seeing it from, uh, or they're, they're influenced by the teams who are forced to take on this type of action because of what they're constantly faced with. If you are not constantly faced with that, you have to be careful. And we're talking about trends in soccer. And one of the and if you're now joining, we're we're, we're talking about um, one of the one of the the, the trends uh, that I uh, that I'm looking at, where there's a great emphasis that is placed on it, which is a more tactical action um, to get beyond the opposition, and uh, and giving you some some context of okay. Why you, why is that happening? Because it didn't just came out of nowhere. This new trend didn't just drop out of the sky. It it is influence or it's coming into um, into this into the football or soccer space because of the more superior teams and what they are constantly faced with with playing more inferior teams and how inferior teams approach the game. 
So it just can't be something that, oh, this is this is the way everybody playing. No, this is the way, this is the the the, the more superior teams have influence, have more influence on the game based on how they play. But they, they have more influence on the game in the way they play because of an opposition, not just this is the way the game should be played now. I think the discussion, because a lot of times the discussion, you know, or most cases, the discussion is around how this team play, and this is the way football going, and the and the and the, the conversation stop right there. It it don't it don't blossom into there is something that is influencing this, and you just can't pick it up and say this is what I want to do without understanding what is influencing your idea, what is influencing your uh, your trends, because you cannot define the trend without an opposition when it relates to the game of, of football, soccer, based on where you're listening from. You, you can't just define trend as something just happening. That might be on a superficial level if you just, if you just speak in general. But when it when it's related to soccer, it related to the game of football, it it is also it is also influenced by an opposition. Your consistent action it is based on an opposition. So those two things have to connect for you to define it as a trend. Not just what you're doing, or not what not just what you want to do, but it is it is based or it's influenced by the behavior of the person coming up against you. Hopefully um, that's making some sense. Please do share, share this live podcast. Um, and, and you can look at this podcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Please do share Please subscribe to the to the YouTube channel, Kyrie McKinnon and Co. Hit that notification bell so that you know when we're on every Saturday, 8:30 p.m. Eastern Time. So, yes, once again, we're talking about trends in the game. What is a trend? And who oftentimes influence the trends in the game. And it's coming from their experience, what they are dealing with, that oftentimes you are not dealing with. So we have um, we have a lot of people who will say, this is how the game should be played because this is what is happening now. Yes, this is how this game, the game, this is how this is where the game is going now. This is the trend because the the superior teams are leading the way, but they're leading the way based on what they're constantly faced with. That they had to become more innovative, more creative, and if you are not careful, you are trying to do something that. It's not necessarily uh, connecting with what you should be doing. Excuse me. Because you're not faced with the same challenges. So this, this, this tactical way of playing, of getting beyond the line, you have to, you have to understand where it's coming from, who is influencing it, and why they're doing it to get a better understanding and to be able to equip your players and, and, and equip your environment uh, to be clearer so that things can look a bit more smoothly, a bit more attractive. Um, and it could be going and, and, and it can be going, it should be going in the right direction because we won the game to go in the right direction for all of us to be able to survive. 
So I was reading, I'm just reading an article, you know, about the evolution of football tactics and um, in the modern game. And there were, you know, some noticeable characteristics um, that was focused on in terms of, once again, uh, the superior teams. And, you know, a couple of those things were regains um, and more versatility uh, from a positional standpoint. You, you saw that coming through um, positional behavior, uh, versatility, and then positional behavior because, you know, players are not a stationary or or not functioning as linear like before. There's there's a lot of uh, we can see a lot more variations in 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 a right fullback coming in and becoming a central mid, and you're seeing different things there. Um, much more fluidity in in the way the game is played, with uh, more variation in the attacking sequence. But all of these things are occurring because of one the superior teams and what they're dealing with from the opposition and one of the and one of the things that really that why I'm saying what I'm saying cuz one of the things that really driving this new trend is is the deep line of confrontation that the superior teams are constantly faced with when when a team thinks uh, things that they are inferior or uh, the opposition can create uh, goal scoring chances consistently there is a there is this approach to defend in a deeper line with more numbers and close space which force forces the opposition or forces the superior team uh, to have to work a bit harder um, to break down these 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 challenges. So the the new trends within the game is being influenced by um, the superior teams that that have to deal with the inferior teams who oftentimes make it so difficult in terms of the organ because teams are much more organized now. Um, teams. Uh, no way you can hurt them. Um, they they understand numbers, and so they're they're very organized and structured and disciplined in their defensive approach, which makes things very difficult for a team that is superior and should be getting the results against against those teams. Should. There's teams that you're supposed to beat, and there's and when you beat them, it, it it's you know, it don't take away the credibility of your performance because you did what you're supposed to do. But when, based on all things considered, when when you beat teams that you don't necessarily need to beat, then it becomes a problem. Or it becomes something good for you, but it becomes a problem for that for that superior team. Changes are made all over the board. So it's not oh, they are the teams are defending deep and it makes it makes it very difficult for us. No, they they have to say we we have to find a way to beat these teams, and that brings this new trend, and 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 one of the things that comes with this new trend is something called possession-based football. I mean, possession-based is a style of play of being in existence uh, for a long time. But this possession-based approach to be able to go beyond the lines, it's, 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 it's what everybody's talking about within football. But also there's a, there's also another way that can have the same impact that everybody refused to talk about 
or it's like a uh it's like a disease in in football which is in soccer which is a more positional based approach so there's possession base there's a possession style of play and then there's a positional style of play but the new trends within the game it is uh, the possession style of play is what everybody is seeing but they're they're <laughs> They're not really looking at why it is that way. I need to go a bit deeper into this discussion, but I don't want you to not experience the RNK, um, the RNK just clean um, learning corner. And to really shed some light on the tactical side of the game, um, which is my favorite part of the game, um, the structure and the, and the organization in in how you play and the way you play, um, I think it's I think it's art. I think it's you know, I think it's poetic. Uh, I I love to see it, so I love to share it. So we will we will take a quick interruption. Jump into into the learning corner, the R and K just clean um, learning corner, and then we'll jump back in and dive a bit deeper into the trends uh, within the game of soccer. We'll be right back. How do you defend when a team plays with four up front and they're trying to isolate your defenders um, to take away coverage? One of the ways you can do that quickly is having your nine force the opposition to play in one area of the field. Um, if that happens, then it forces the ten to be on the ball side, taking away the spaces, the seven, get really compact and a bit deeper. The two is on the outside. And now we have the balance with the eight coming across and the 11 dropping inside. Three coming inside. What, it, what becomes very important is in the central area of defense. How do you deal with this? Well, one of the ways to deal with it is bringing back the six to mark on the ball side and allowing the four to give coverage. So when you see a team play with two forward, it's be, two forward, sorry, it's because they're trying to take away the coverage uh, for the first pressure. So if there's one V one, then the coverage becomes very compromised because if, let's say for instance, quick example, if the ball, if the ball comes into nine, and the 10 is there, if the 5 give coverage, then there's gaps in between here. If the 3 comes inside, then there's an option outside. So to take care of that, we make our numbers, we make our numerical advantage in the middle here, which give coverage and allow um, the players to stay with theirs. I hope this was helpful. Um, see you again at a new Learning Corner. Welcome back to the Coach Kyrie Show. Kyrie here. Trends in the game. And we're dealing with um, this tactical approach in terms of going um, beyond the lines. And the great influences of the game and how trends are influenced um, subjectively. I, I believe that's, that's how... 
um, you know, you know, we we take on these new trends that influence our our preparation, our planning, our curriculum. You know, everything. Uh, it's influenced by uh, the better teams. But my my concern with it because more and more I'm seeing that people are taking on these trends, which I have no problem with. Um, but it's it's not a real. Uh, it don't seem it, it's it don't seem to me like there's a real understanding or a, a, a true measure of the why. And like I tried to explain um, earlier, is the the new trends in the game now and where it's coming from is what is happening um, from the superior to the inferior teams. And that is influencing this way of playing. And one of the ways, uh, one of the ways or the style of play that is really influencing the game is this possession-based style. I'm not talking about, you know, some countries, we know the South American countries, uh, we know um, uh, some European teams like Portugal and and, and stuff they that that has always been their culture that's how they play the game um but you but you just seeing like everybody just adopting this possession based approach um not necessarily part of their culture but the, but this is the new trend and they believe while the new trend is, can we get the ball um, when we're in attack? Can we be able to get the ball beyond the lines? And the, the, the way that it was influenced was through possession because of the approach of the opposition against the stronger, more, um, uh, the, the bigger teams. So this is what they have to do. This is the way they have to play because they're dealing with an opposition that don't allow them to just utilize space behind them. Excuse me. So, and and to play this way, I think you, I believe you have to be very methodical in your approach. You have to be clear. You have to have a clear game model You have to have a clear game model, um, a style of play. Once again, my concern is, and I heard it, and you know, I I talk to people, and they, and and they feel like there's no other way to play. There's no other way to play within. Um, with within the trends that they're seeing, okay, you want to you want to go with the game, but you also have to have your as a coach, you also have to have your own football idea, your own soccer idea. You could flip that whole trend, um, and and in and use it as part of what would be the weaknesses of a team playing like that? And are we allowing them to play against us like that if we try to do that? Rather than just saying, this is a new trend. This is the way the game is going. This is the way I want to play. But it's not necessarily where the game is going just like that. The, the way the game is going because it's influence by the most superior teams because they had to change their way in how they play the game because of the opposition. Like I said, there's no trends without opposition. So if you are going to adapt, if you're going to adapt uh, the new trends within the game, which is being more elaborate, being more possession-based, to be able to get beyond the lines, 
you have to be constantly faced with the same thing that the people who are influencing this are faced with. And I'm not talking to the people who play, who culture is based on this, who have always played. That is their identity. And, and even some of the countries who had uh, that, that more expansive, elaborate, are more um, cognizant of how they do it, how they approach it, because uh, it's not necessarily working for them at the international level. So even, even in, in those moments, they're they are saying, yes, uh, this is is this is this is the new trend, and the new trend is can we uh, can we be able to get the ball behind the lines to create chances or and to score goals? Uh, but this is our approach, not necessarily the superior teams, because when you listen to people talk about how they want to play and and why they want to play more possession based, they you, you, they use certain teams, certain countries. We want to play like that. This is the way the game is going now. And we have to be careful about that because there's many factors that come into, into playing like that that if you are not associating um, those characteristics with what you're trying to do, then it makes it very difficult and it creates confusion. You have to have a clear game model. And that's only happening. The possession base that we so crave we 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 refuse to deal with the more positional side of playing because we call it kick away. We call it, oh, you're just kicking the ball away. So we've totally uh, disassociate ourselves with a style of play that is within the game of soccer that can do the same thing, that is there to do the same thing. And is there to do the same thing based on who is in front of you and what is the opposition presenting to you. So... So on one hand, we're seeing this trend of everybody wants to play possession because it's attractive, it's, it's elaborate. But when when a team decides to play positional, well, okay, that is just kicking the ball away. But the team that wants to play possession base, it's not just playing possession, there's other factors and other characteristics that must be associated with that style of play that you must be able uh, to consistently do to say that is your style of play. So if you choose to be a more possession-based team, then there's characteristics that come with that way of playing. That when you don't effectively or efficiently uh, function within that capacity, then you, you see more times than not, you struggle. You, you're you unable to beat teams that you, you're you really not supposed to beat. And that's the, those teams you have to learn how to beat to become a high-performance team or an elite team. And the teams that you're supposed to beat, you beat them doing what you're doing. And you think it can carry over. And it, and it to this day, it is not. Because if you decide to play a certain way, you you must have all the characteristics. Now we're probably going to have a, another discussion about the characteristics of a possession-based style, the characteristics of a, a positional style. 
There's components in all four moments of the game that you have to be able to do constant or consistently well to be to be known as a possession-based team. You could want to try and do it. You could want to try and do it because you're influenced by what you're seeing from superior teams that only they're only trying to do it because of what is what is in front of them. So you just can't take it on and say, this is the way we want to play because it produces, you see it produces results for those teams. But they're only doing it based on the opposition. You don't, you don't necessarily, my point is you don't, you don't necessarily need to be adopting something that that don't fit what you're dealing with because you want to play like that. I started off by saying this is a new trend in the game and I, and subjectively I don't think people truly understand what a trend mean or what trends mean in soccer in football i don't i don't i don't think i don't think they understand what it is uh, and just based on this just based on discussion with players um and sometimes discussion with uh with coaches Hi, Dexter. Good to see you. You see, hopefully, with this uh, with this discussion, that coaches will have a bit of their own uh, their own idea um, within the trends that fit the needs of who is in front of them, and um, and not just who's in front of them from 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 their team perspective, but the opposition also. Because you have to also consider contact hours that you that you have. I see a lot of people trying to, to be more possession-based and elaborate because that is the influence, that is the trend within the game. And I, I keep, I'm hoping that you, excuse me, that you get what I'm saying, where this is coming from. Where is this coming from? It didn't just drop out of the sky, or it's not just a new way. It's it's a it's a way that uh, that was based on opposition behavior. So if you are not faced with that same opposition's behavior, why is it you're adopting something? Uh, maybe just because it look attractive. And that is not the only way to create opportunities to do exactly what you need to do when you have possession of the ball. The only thing you the only thing you must do when you're in possession of the ball is try to score a goal. That's the game. When you don't have the ball, the, the most important thing is to stop the team from scoring. How you do that is based on what is in front of you in terms of your group and the opposition, and how you can make your team much more efficient and effective in doing that. And that comes with variables. Um, that comes with some constants, whatever you want to do. But don't be mistaken that the game is still, when I have the ball, how quickly can I score? When I don't have the ball, I must be able to stop the opposition from scoring. Now, based on opposition and levels, then you, you've got to have more variations in there to, uh, to be able to create the chances and score the goals that you want to do, want to score. But it's still 
it's still a game of when I have the ball, I must try to score. When I don't have the ball, I must try to defend. The new trends in the game. The trends in the game. This one is a big one. This, um, the attacking side of getting beyond the line, and how it how is it being influenced? How is it being pushed into the game, um, and how people are using? They are using things that's not necessarily, uh, from my perspective, respectfully. It's it's not truly understood. Because every single time I went to the, I went and I, I, I go watch games, go, go around watch games, and every single team wants to play possession. But then, because it's attractive, there's an ebb and flow about playing possession. But it looks good. It's attractive when the tempo is right, when um, the quality of pass, the connection of movements, it's etc. When all those things are understood, it's it's attractive. It's beautiful to watch. It's like music, the one that you love, and it you know it gives you a certain feeling, and and you love to see it because you see it on TV, and it it's it's nice. But sometimes everybody like the attractive thing that they can't pay for. Everybody want the attractive thing that they can't pay for. I said that because when when you want to play like that and you want to establish that, there must be more education um, in terms of player understanding of what that is. And I'm and I'm harping on possession because this is the new trend in how to break or how to get beyond the lines when when you're in attack, and and I'm explaining to you where uh, where the influence came from. More and more, you see it with certain teams because of the opposition they're coming up against. And what they have to do to be able to be efficient in terms of scoring and creating chances. And it's a difficult way of playing the game. You know, you sit and you ask players, you know, what is the definition of possession? And they don't know. So if you don't know something, how are you going to perform it? If you don't even know the definition, where would the knowledge come from? And if there's no knowledge, then there's no action. So the players don't know what is possession. You hear players tell you stuff like, possession is keeping the ball. How? It sounds right because when you have possession of something, it's ownership. So on the on the superficial level, on the surface level, that might sound like the most intelligent answer. Oh, it's to keep the ball. That, no, it's not. No, it's not. That's not what possession is. So right there and then, they, they're adopting something that they don't understand. They said to keep the ball. What does it look like? You know, for most people, possession is starting the ball at, from the back. Once again, that is not possession. Possession is not starting the ball from the back. That's not the definition of possession. You, you don't define possession by starting the ball at the back. But they will say, we want to play possession. How are you doing it? We start the ball from the back. Like, that's not... What is the definition of it? Starting the ball at the back. 
you no, know, it's not. It's it's not starting the ball at the back. It's not keeping the ball. So once again, they don't. They're being pushed into this trend, but is there's limited to no education in in this aspect. Even to the point of when playing possession, what are the characteristic characteristics of a possession-based team? Stop being taught. It's just playing out the back. It's just starting the ball from the back. And then it's keeping the ball. So if anybody wants to answer, you know, what do you think is the definition of possession in soccer? Because now anything that anything that you kick up the field to people is not soccer. Why is it not soccer? Why is it not football? There, there are clear two style of plays. There are clear two style of play, plays. Possession and positional. But like I said, the influences of the game, the trends in the game, are the superior teams. And the superior teams are faced with uh, a certain behavior from the opposition that forces them to play a certain way. So you just can't say that is the way to play the game. It tells me that you, you don't have a football idea. You don't have a soccer idea. You're not clear about your system and that uh, creates a winning culture or a, or a, or a, a successful high-performance environment. You're just basing it, and, and you must be able, because nothing is new. You have to take things from the successful people and try to recreate it, uh, bring your own innovative uh, way, your own creative way, and 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 add it to create a, a successful model, a winning model. But it it starts with you having your own football idea, your own soccer idea, and that idea um, should be the new trends. Every coach should have their own football idea. That should be the new trend because that is original. That is not really influenced by um, a football idea is not influenced by the external forces, more internal. It's what you believe. And then you use your resources to bring that thing to life. But what we see in the, within the trend of the game is uh, this um, wanting to go beyond the lines um, consistently to create and to score gold. It's, it's, a, it's a focus, but the, but the influences of this is, is around the superior teams that are forced to play more possession base. And I know it might say, well, that's how the way you're supposed to play. That's not the angle I'm going. The angle I'm going with this is you um, who are following it have, for, from my perspective, respectfully, have not done due diligence to fully understand why. And, uh, and I'm saying to you the trend is because of opposition behavior uh, against more superior teams is forcing this approach. I'm telling you. And the players who were asking to play in this way, 
they don't even know the definition of it. And then all of the components that comes with that way, that style of playing, it's not even it's not even enough contact hours to be able to do it. There's not enough education to do it. There's not enough time to 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 really um, conduct IEDPs and and stuff to do it. That's not an easy way of playing. There's there's so much that comes with playing a possession base. This is why few teams do it, and that's why they master it. Excuse me. And if you look at teams that play that way, if you look at the quality. <sighs> It's crazy. If it's if it's such an easy thing to do, over 50% of the top leagues you would see doing it. The, the, the country that I believe plays more possession base across the board is in Spain because that is the culture. That is their culture. That's what they do. That's how they play the game. And then you might, you're probably going to see, it, well, Brazil, obviously. But I was there just a couple, a year or so. They're now trying to make changes to that, to that way of playing and how they do it. And how most teams that play possession how they have to do it when they're coming up against inferior competition. And the way Brazil used to do it and now how they're doing it with that same wanting to wanting to play, but there it's more dynamic. It's more with more speed. It's more, can we get there quickly? Rather than, if you look, one of the things I was speaking to a colleague in the last men's workup and something that we picked up that was consistent teams that were moving the ball very slow scored the least amount of goals teams with defenders having the ball for uh, uh, five seconds putting their legs on the ball slowing it down stopping it trying to see where the spaces are and moving it they scored the least amount the goals and oftentimes, we would watch the game and we will say, oh, this game probably going down to penalties. Or uh, it's going to, it will be difficult for them to win. Top teams too. Because the, the level of defending and the ability to control space at that level, it's difficult. But... Why are, you, why are you focusing on that? But your team is never coming up against that type of competition. Every single team come in and press everything out of you. They come in and try to win the ball back in crucial areas of the field. But you say, well, we're trying to play because this is where the game is going. Is it? It's only a trend because the superior teams are doing it and, and now everybody wants to do it from a game perspective, from how people are being influenced by the game and what they're trying to do is because of the superior teams. But not enough people are, are stopping to have more discussion about why this is happening and should we be doing it if we're not faced with the same thing. Should we change our way of playing? Because if you start adopting that and then, okay, when you're playing against lower competition, they go sit back there. But then 
you come against a European side or a team that is really uh, superior to you, and now you go and defend in deep. What happens if you try to play the same way with teams like that? I'm going to show you when te when certain teams coming up against certain teams, they they can because they're accustomed to playing this way. They only have to deal with this with in certain uh, at a certain level. But when they're coming up against certain competition, they know. Listen, we don't need to do this. We don't need to do that because this don't need us to play like this but then those very teams make this thing a trend and now you we all buy it over and we say not all we all buy it because not me but i see a lot of people just buy it over and they say this is the way we we going to play and they don't consider the why behind it it's just something they take on and it's not like a trend of, okay, you need to work more on free kicks because, you know, we see over 20% of goals are scored from free kicks. That's the trend we're seeing. So let's work on our free kicks. That's that's general across the board. But when you, when you start talking about possession to positional, uh, more consideration need to be paid on the environment, your culture, you know, who's in front of you, how much time you have, all those things need to be considered. The level of the players, the level of the coaching, all of these things need to be considered. You just don't say, oh, we're gonna be we're gonna play possession because everybody's doing it. No. I think we're I think we're making a mistake. We're making a mistake there. When you look at the uh so possession is not keeping the ball. You don't define possession by just starting the ball at the back. You don't. I think I will, I will allow you who are listening uh, to do some research and, 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 and to make the effort to truly understand what it is so that it don't sound like I'm being overly... Uh, I'm, I'm making up my own stuff, but you go, you go, you go look, look it up on your, on, on your own and see what you, what you come up with. Because it's important that you know that. Because I hear it a lot. You know, we 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 want to play like this, and we don't want to play like that, with with no consideration, or no for, or not a true understanding of what you might be might be saying. So it's important for you to to understand that. So in 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 the I looked at the EPL league and I look at three teams: Liverpool, Arsenal, Manchester City. And and their percentage for possession is all in the sixties. Now look look at what happens when those three teams are playing against the opposition. How many, how many times they're going up against teams that we're gonna sit here in a low block and 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 try to utilize what we have to try to defeat them. So now they oftentimes have the ball a lot, and they have the ball a lot because once again, there's a there's components that comes with a possession-based team that you say you're a possession based team or you want to play possession but you neglect all the other components in the all in all the other functions of the game transition um defending um uh, transition to attack transition to defend you neglect all those other components and all the principles that come that comes with being a possession based team i'm harping on possession because this this trend has come into the game and every single, uh, from the youth nine team to everybody, uh, thinks uh, this is the way you have to play the game. And, and it might be, but I'm saying, but the decision and the, the training and the ideas don't connect with what the possession-based style is. Maybe you'll get there, but it's not. And most of the times the players don't know 
Excuse me, what possession is. And then, when Manchester City come against Liverpool, one in the 50s and one in the 40s, what is happening there? The approach is different. And you soccer scholars, and you who listen, and, and to the to the not just go watch the game, but listen to the comments from the manager, listen to uh, the approach. It's all based on the opposition. They're not just saying, well, this is the way the game needs to be played and this is how we will play. No, it is based on the opposition. It's based on different factors. So when you take the more positional approach, oh, you're kicking the ball away. It's defined as kicking the ball away. So I went and watched a youth, a youth 12 game. Not worried to name the club or whatever, but went to look at the youth 12 game and the opposition is pressuring the ball relentless because they're bigger, they're quicker, and they, they believe, you know what, if they want to do that, we, we will be able to win the ball close to goal or goal score. Now, these the, up, the players who are trying to bail it out from the back, they are not as strong. They, uh, they are not as quick and they struggle with the different press and it's not even like this press is awesomely done it's just running and closing the ball down as quickly as possible not in an angle not in a specific approach uh, there's spaces all over the field but the young players are unable to deal with it and the messages continue to play out. Continue to play out. Because this is the way we want to play. And while that continues to happen, uh, one thing about um, one thing about learning is that I've learned is you know every Every thought, everything you think, as a man think it in his heart, so is he, but everything you think creates an emotion. It's a default. Everything that you're thinking that is in your non-conscious uh, creates an, an emotion. That thing now, as you think that thing, it goes into your consciousness. And that consciousness produces a feeling. The feeling is the action. And it's a response to what your what is in what is now in your consciousness so if you have a child doing something over and over that they are failing and you're telling them keep doing it that is what will register into their consciousness you can't stop that that's biology if if i if this if i continue to have a certain thinking if this is in my mind, I'm losing the ball, I'm losing the ball, I'm losing the ball. After a while, if I, so when we started and we start playing, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come to the game knowing or believing I'm going to lose the ball. The action is actually happening now. So it happening so many times, the feeling happening so many times, it comes into my consciousness. And that consciousness produced the feeling and the feeling of failure. So now that is what is in my thoughts. So every time I'm playing out the back, I'm nervous and I'm making mistakes because I can't think about nothing. And you says, and you say, keep doing it. And I and maybe I maybe you say over a period of time you will figure it out. But 
that's not how that is not how the brain think it's not how the brain takes in information and have the output that you desire you have to win the battle in your mind and you also have to see enough moments where you can succeed that that could also register in your consciousness and give you the feeling of confidence and belief that even sometimes with a mistake, you can go back to, okay, I could fix this, I could fix that, because there's so many variables, there's so many variations that you can go to. So that was just an example of, okay, this, this is the trend in the game, so now we'll do it at all costs, and over a period of time, you will figure it out. Now, if someone, um, responsibly, if someone continuously drink, you don't keep giving them a drink and say one day you, you, you will stop drinking. It's not going to happen. You could, you could, you could take this, you could take this drink away from this person, put them in, in, in rehab and, and without proper support, that person will relapse right back into that. They will relapse. So how could you continuously tell someone to do something that they're they're not finding success at the level they're supposed to be, but you say, we'll continue to do it. No, you, you will continue to do it because you are not experiencing what the athlete is experiencing in those moments of failure. Your job is to find maybe... Uh, Respectfully, you you have to find a way to where success looks possible. So that can come into their consciousness. Whatever that looks like, that can teach them what success look like and feel like and how you, if you just get it right where you can be, now you, you could start working back from there. But success need to come into their consciousness. Or the possibility, because however you think, you will react, you will respond, you will live, you will behave, whatever is in your thinking. So if I'm failing at doing something consistently, why is it you think that my brain will just rewire itself? No, it's, it's, the, it's the thoughts. Is what is the thoughts and non-conscious thoughts that comes into your consciousness is actually teaching you what to do, is actually driving you to where you're trying to go or where you're not trying to go either way. Because your thoughts produce an emotion. It's it's a default. You don't you don't get to say, I don't need an emotion. And once that thought get to your consciousness where you actually know what you're doing, then it produces the feeling. And that feeling is a result of what you know having having your consciousness. It will respond to that. So if you don't if you don't gather that that thought, if you don't rewire that thought from that stage before it gets to your consciousness, then you will respond. You'll respond in a way. So if someone is angry and they don't they don't capture that 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 whatever is driving that anger quick enough and it gets into their consciousness and that is the response, then they will respond the way angry people respond. That's what they will do. Because that's what that's what that experience is. When I feel this way, when this happens, I feel this way, I will respond this way. I will respond this way. So Something I want us to consider when we uh, when we're seeing trends, when we're seeing things coming, and and don't just pick it up and run with it and say I should do this, I should do that. But consider who you have around. Consider who you're working with. Consider who you're trying to raise their levels. Who you're trying to um, give them confidence and belief. Excuse me. You don't just need to. Just follow things. I would encourage coaches and, and players to, you know, dive a bit deeper in the under in understanding what trends are and 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 you know doing the work. 
doing the work. Understand the components that aligned itself for these things, um, whatever direction you want to go. Um, so you can, you know, you can effectively teach and you can and, and see the efficiency within the athlete uh, in terms of the outcome. And we're going to be talking now about how can you help them to get beyond the lines, which, which is a big thing now. You've got to find a way which helps them to do that well. Because it's still a trend. The trend is to get beyond the lines and create and score chances. It's the way the game going. So thanks for being with me. Please do share. Um, send your feedback, your questions. Um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, even LinkedIn. Um, I'm there. I'm all over. Um, Kyrie McKinnon. I'm not hard to find. So we could have discussions about anything soccer. So feel free. But thanks for being with me again. Have a good night and look forward to seeing you here next Saturday um, to talk more soccer. Have a good night. Now is the time to keep your family warm with quality insulation for your home from Pro Insulation Company. At Pro Insulation, we solve all your residential and commercial insulation needs. Attics, crawl spaces, walls and ceilings, new and existing homes, and we offer traditional insulation and spray foam. Call Pro Insulation Company today for your free in-home estimate. For all your insulation needs. Leave it to the pros and call Pro Insulation Company in Plainfield today.